Hi everyone. In this video, you're going to learn how to get up and running with Idle and how to create your first post. Idle is a toolkit for creating data-driven stories and explorable explanations, and it builds on the Markdown markup language for text formatting and the React programming language for declarative user interfaces. Uh, for reference, most of this information is available online at idlelang.org. And if you want to learn more, you can always go to the docs page here, and you can learn about all the different details of everything that Idle can do. In this video, we're just going to go over the basics of how to get started. Okay, so to start off with, I'm going to assume that you have Idle installed. You can check that you do um, by running this command idle dash dash version, which will tell you that Idle is installed and which version you have. Um, if you haven't installed Idle yet, check out the docs under getting started. It's very uh, quick uh, to get up and running with it. Okay, so now that you have idle installed, the first thing that we want to do is create a new post. To do this, I can just run the command idle create, uh, which will ask me a couple questions, and then it will create a new uh, folder with the post all set up for me. So it asks me what, I, what folder I want to put the post in. I'm going to call it video tutorial. Um, the name can be the same. And then it's just going to take a second uh, to create a bunch of files there and install all of the dependencies that we need to get this thing up and running. OK, great. So now that's finished, I can go ahead and navigate into the directory that was just created. Um, and what I'm going to do is open this folder in a text editor. OK, so now you can see that there's a bunch of folders and, and some files in here. Um, and I'm going to go over what all those mean in just a second. But the first thing that I want to do is just show you how to run idle locally. Once you're inside of this folder, all you have to do is run the idle command without any options. Um, and then it will build the project and open it in a web browser. OK, so this is the post. Notice that it's got the title uh, that we entered on the command line. Um, and then it's got a bunch of other kind of boilerplate here. So there's some text, um, there's a range slider that you can play with, and over here there's a button that you can click that will update this visualization. Um, and this is just the, the default that uh, is created when you run idle create, um, just so that you can get an idea of all the different features that are available. Now, going back to the folder here, um, the first thing that I want to look at is this index.idle file. This is the file that really powers everything that you see in the browser here. So you'll notice that there's a header here that corresponds to this header on the page. And then there's text here that corresponds to this text and so on. Um, and if you go ahead and modify this text, maybe I'll just delete this portion and save the file, the page in your browser will automatically reload to uh, reflect the changes that you've made in uh, index.idle. And it'll continue to do this as long as this command idle is running. Now, there are a couple other folders and files that um, you should know what they're there for. Um, these two at the top, .idle and build, um, these get created when you run the idle command and it builds the project. So you really should never have to mess with those. But if you want to look at them, you can look inside the build folder you can see that idle just outputs a static index.html file and JavaScript and CSS. So this is what gets compiled out. Um, the more interesting parts are the components folder, which is where you can write custom JavaScript, which you can then embed in the idle markup. For example, here, this custom component tag uh, tells idle to include the JavaScript component, uh, custom component here. Um, the data folder is where you can drop in JSON or CSV files and then subsequently use those in the idle markup. The node modules folder uh, is where dependencies get stored. Um, so this is managed automatically on the command line. Um, if you open it, there's like a bunch of stuff in here and you really don't probably want to worry about that one. You should never really have to go in, in into that folder and modify anything directly. Um, the last folder is static. This is a place that you can put any static content which you want the web page to have access to. So for example, if you want to put images on your page and reference those, or um, font files or something like that, anything that is in this static folder will get copied over 
to the, your build folder during the compilation process. And so when you deploy your project to the web, those images and those files uh, will still exist and, you, and your users can, can access them. Um, going on, the gitignore file just uh, tells git, which is a version management software, um, to ignore some of the files in this directory. It's not super important right now. Um, we've already seen the index.idle file. Package lock is another uh, dependency management thing. We don't really need to worry about that one. Package.json is where metadata is defined about the project. Um, so things like the name of the project, uh, the version, the license, etc. Um, it's where you list uh, anything, any dependencies that the project has go in here. Um, and it's also where you can configure idle with cu custom options. So there's some options set here by default. Um, but if you want to know more about those options, you can look at the docs page and all the options that you have access to are listed and documented here. Um, and you modify those just by changing them directly in the package.json file. Um, and finally, there's the styles.css folder or file. Uh, so this is where you can write CSS and anything that you write in here will get applied to the page. So for example, if I wanted to turn the background of the page um, blue for some reason, I could do that. And now it's, now it's blue. So uh, you can do any sort of customization of the styles that you want in that CSS file. OK, great. So now let's get back to the idle markup. Now, idle markup is a mixture of texts and components and variables. I'm going to go through what each of those mean. First, I'm just going to clear out some of this boilerplate stuff. So we're starting kind of from kind of a fresh slate. Um, so anything that you just type in here is going to be text. Um, you can type in any text that you want, and it will automatically show up in your page output. Um, this is based on markdown. So if you want to put headers um, or lists in here, you can do that. Um, anything that you can do in markdown, generally you can do in idle as well. Um, beyond just these text formatting options, you can also include components. And that's what these uh, square brackets denote. So here, when we see header, what it's telling idle is we're going to create a header component and we're going to pass in a bunch of different options. So we're going to pass in a title, a subtitle, an author name, and link, etc. Um, so for this, I don't really want a subtitle. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to put my name here as the author. And then I'm going to put my personal website here. Um, now if I save, you're going to see that this is updated. Um, with the new options that I provided. OK, so these uh, options are referred to as properties in idle. Um, and they can take on a few different forms. So you can pass in just normal strings. You could also pass in a number, like one, two, three, four. Um, and these are just static, uh, static properties. But if you want to get a little more fancy, you can also put uh, expressions in here. So you can put two backticks, and then anything in here is going to be uh, run as a JavaScript expression. So I can say I can add two strings together, or three strings together. Now, if I save that, you'll see it's it knows to execute this expression and then pass in the result as the, the property. Um, in this case, it's not really that useful, but in some cases, it, it can be very useful. Um, in particular, it's useful once you start using variables. And to use a variable in idle, you declare it like components. Um, you give it a, you use the tag var, and you give it a name, and you give it an initial value. OK, so now that I have this variable, I could actually pass this in. Um, as the option here. So I can pass in just the variable directly, and then whatever value that variable has will get passed in as the option. So I could change this to my title. And again, still not so useful. 
Um, but you can also use these variables in expressions. And so, for example, maybe I want to add these two variables together with this space in between. Now, when I run that, again, it, it computes the result and it knows what, uh, what the current values of x and y are. Okay, um, so this is the basics of how to use components and variables and expressions. Um, if you wanna learn more about the built-in components that Idle has, you can click on the built-in components tab in the docs, and this lists all the different components that are available to you by default. Um, they're grouped into different categories um, to help you think about how to organize them. And you can click on any of these and you'll get um, typically an example with some code and then all the different properties that the component accepts. Now, uh, one of the components that's available is a text input. So we can put this uh, in our markup and go back to our page. And now we see that we have this text input box and I can type things in here um, and nothing really happens. Okay, so this is interesting because now we're actually accepting input from the user. Um, and the text input has a property called value, which uh, maps onto what's currently being displayed in the text input. So I can say text input value here and now if the page reloads, now we see it's a value. And that, actually notice I actually can't type anymore in here or delete this. Um, that's because this value is now hard coded. Um, there's, no, there's no way for this to change. Um, if we want the value to be able to change, we need to use a variable. So what I can do is assign the value to one of my variables here. So I'm gonna get rid of Y and just use X. And then I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, I'm gonna use X as my title, and I'm also gonna pass in X as the value to the text input. Um, but now what happens is if I actually modify this, you'll notice that the uh, title updates in response automatically. And this is pretty cool. So this, now um, what we've done here is we've tied the value of X to both the header's title and also the text input value. And so this allows us to kind of string things together in the article and uh, make events happen and sort of parameterize components differently based on what readers do. And this is really the basis for interactivity in idle. Now that's all for this video. In the next video in this tutorial series, I'm gonna show you how to create custom components and use them with idle variables and also how to use your own data sets and bring them into your idle project. All right, see you next time.